Okay, uh, let's talk about these menu items, uh, tab menu items down here at the bottom of the screen. Um, each one of these uh, is pretty uh, in-depth and does something <coughs> to the map, so um, they're very important. Let's start with the texture one. Um, we're going to click on the side of a map here. I've just got a, a work map I'm working on. <coughs> We're going to select this side, and um, what you can do with this uh, texture is you can obviously change the color of the texture by being in the side mode. If you're in the line mode or the point mode, you won't be able to check uh, change the texture. You just need to be in the side mode. Um, and each texture or side that has a texture uh, can have uh, a base texture or texture one. Um, and it can also have a uh, another texture, texture two. Um, and some of these textures, let me make this a little bit bigger, um, are already 3D. So they've got like a texture on top and a texture on the bottom, and then you can actually put another one on top of that. So let's go about um, seeing how we do that. So if I don't want this texture and I want to um, keep using that texture. I'll copy that and I can just paste it right over top of it. As long as my first box is checked, I can use my bottom layer. Now if I want to add another layer on top of that, I found the easiest way to do that is to copy the, the base texture that you would like if you have it open. If you don't have it open, then just go ahead and select it um, and then you can have that. Now I'll just copy that texture and put it to the application clipboard. Then I would come down and grab a secondary texture like this and see it's down here and replace the first texture with this. So I'm going to hit Control C, copy that, then I'm going to hit Paste and this will paste the other texture back on because it's in the application clipboard. Now with the Windows clipboard that we just pay, uh, copied the ceiling texture to, we're going to Control V in the second spot hit this arrow button so that it is actually selected and uh, you don't need to have use second on it, that's only when you're going to be copying over um, but now we have the rock 097 and the ceiling 05 dash light and you'll see it has dash light next to it that means it can be used as a light source some of these <clears throat> secondary textures are not light sources that's not a light source that is. Now, when I um, click my right mouse button or my left mouse button, that'll select the first texture. If I click my second mouse button, that'll click it on the second texture. If you want to do it that way, that's kind of quick. Okay, so I want to copy this texture to this section right there. So if I copy, uh, select this map, um, I'm going to, what is that, oh that's the reactor, uh, I'm going to need to um, have both of these boxes selected so that it takes the first and the second texture. So I'll copy these and now when I go to paste this they'll both be there. Okay, now say I don't like that and I want to uh, copy this texture back over these two again. Um, so I'll just hit copy and then paste on top. Now if I, if before I do this, before I paste on top, if I have uh, this deselected and I'm just going to be copying the first on there, then when I hit paste the light stays, but if I use, use the second and I don't do anything, you know, not recopy it, and I hit paste, then it'll still automatically pull because it still remembers the information from this cube. Okay, so that's kind of what those are for. These are for your textures, first and second textures, copying paste obviously. If I want to uh, paste everything that's touching this cube, that would mean this cube, this cube, this cube, this cube, this cube, this cube, this cube. I would need to use second, so I'd hit paste on that paste. Since this doesn't have a second, it's different from what that was, so I had to do that individually. But as long as they um, 
have first and second textures, then you should be okay. So say I wanted to take uh, and change all of the green textures in this map to orange. I could tag those textures and then everything that's green that's touching this is all touching even as here it has to have one line touching it in order to be selected otherwise go here tag it somewhere else and add tag textures you can do it there next time so here we are tag textures I can then go in here and take everything and change it to whatever texture I like um, you know so it's like that Okay, I'm going to go back. All right, now I'm in another green, not the same. But that shows how you do that. Now everything's got these yellow, orange outlines on them, and that means those uh, cubes or surfaces or sides are selected. So if you're going to do anything else, they will be affected. So Control M, as in mother, will deselect those. So then you can begin working on something else. Um, so we've talked about that. Uh, let's talk about the alignment of uh, textures. Sometimes you can get textures that uh, aren't lined up correctly. This is uh, like they look like this. Let me zoom in. <coughs> if you can see, this little texture is squished. This is kind of stretched. This is normal. So what you can do, tag plane which will tag the whole plane you this will be the alignment it's all align one thing if you hit again it doesn't do anything but if you hit this one this will select um, more than one so this will highlight these two or affect these two as well and any others that are uh, out of line so this one selects one this one selects multiple and this one is a general um, it's an alignment, but it it works for things like uh, when you've got uh, lines or something like that, and they're not lining up because you're going up and down a hallway or something. These happen to be straight, so they're going to line up anyway. <clears throat> but you'll use these in other instances. But this is also uh, well, this lines everything up to related to this uh, particular square. And um, let's see. You can take this square, you can rotate it individually of itself by doing this or putting in values however you want. This will move it up and down. This will move it left to right. And this will do something like stretch it out from center on, which can be helpful in some cases. This will stretch it up vertically. Okay. If you're sick of all this, come back and you're just working on one. Just hit this, and it'll realign that back together. So these are just your alignment buttons. This is a massive align. This is just uh, some inputs for moving things smaller increments. Um, I've never unchecked that, so I don't know what that does. If you have a texture two on here. Um, so I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put uh, texture two. I'm going to put uh, this here. If you want that to be aligned differently, the texture two rotation applies to that only. It'll align these however you need them. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, let's do. Okay. The other things about texture involve lighting, and that's this. These values here are the corners, this is the top left, this is the top right, bottom left, bottom right, and we'll mess with that in a little bit. And this is your brightness that takes that individual texture, and if you make it bright, all of those textures, so including these, and if you have these anywhere else in the mine, will go to 100%. <coughs> okay, so that's... Uh, that's all we're going to discuss on textures right now. Let's move over to segments. Segments. Um, this tab is for an individual block. So this block itself right here we're going to mess with. If you'll see this is segment number 38 or block number 38. Uh, it has no function. 
if I did want to make this a fuel center, I could now uh, make this a fuel center. And then when I fly up in there, I'll start regaining uh, energy. I can make this a reactor uh, room, which will mean nothing will spawn in there, no missiles or um, weapons will spawn there. There's a limitation of, I believe, 50 reactor cubes, if I'm not mistaken. It could be more. Uh, but basically, you make this a fuel center um, or, you know, um, a reactor room if you need to. Other than that, it's set at none, uh, unless you're making, of course, team stuff and you want to do goals. But that's what that uh, f does. The function tells you what this cube does. Most of the time, it's just set to none. Um, you can have a default texture set in there if you want. Uh, I never use these two. Uh, let's see. Okay, so now we're talking about the sides. So side one, side two, side three, side four, side five, and six. This is side six. This is the point right here. Whenever you're moving your map around, you see where that center space line is? I want to get to this cube right here. I just move it over to there. Set it up like that. I'm that far away. Pull it down. Get over there. Now I can zoom into that cube. Same thing for over here. Just kind of rotate your mouse around a little bit and get it where you need to be. Then you can work on it. Okay, so this is side six. This is point one, point two, point three, and point four. And out of those points, there's an X, Y, and Z. X, Y, and Z. Okay, so you're going to be coming in different directions. Um, if I change this to 80 and hit apply, you'll see what happens. It pulls it to the left a little bit, and that's not. If I'm, if I'm fixing it, that's what I would do. That's how I can get to that point. Uh, you change things this way from this section here. I like 30. Okay. So, you know, whatever we're going to do there. That's how, uh, what that is for. The segment and the point adjustments. You move the point to where you need it to be to line it up to have this cube that you need. Um, let's see what else are has here. Uh, add bot maker, add equipment maker, add fuel center. This is just repeating what function is. Okay, so that's what that is. Uh, there's no walls in here. Well, this is wall details, but there's no triggers or anything like that. That's used for uh, D2. Never mess with any of this stuff. It's just mainly this section right here is what I use in the segments. Okay, under walls. Now, if we are here, we want to put in a wall somewhere. Let's find a section we can put a wall. Okay, we're going to put a wall right here. <clears throat> it's not a good place for a wall, but it'll work for this purpose. Um, so there's different types of walls. This is what you know. You're gonna add a wall. You come up here and you select what type of wall you want. If you want a normal wall, you hit. This is the texture it's going to use. Um, so just hit add, and you'll see the transparency is that color. You can click on this color or whatever color you want to be your wall, and then you go to the. Uh, let me make it this blue color. Go to the other side. And you'll see that it's selected now, and there's nothing there. You want to add a wall there, too. And it'll put the same wall in if you color it. The first one, it'll put the same wall on the other side, which is <coughs> uh, beneficial, helpful, quick. This is acceptable. If you have uh, no other ways to go through this, or no angles, uh, or no edges, no wall edges, we'll talk about that. This little edge right here. You don't want to be flying down this corridor and this corridor and, and have this edge. You need some kind of a block uh, there to go. That's what I'm talking about on the edges. But if it's in this instance and it's just against a wall, doom, doom, you don't have to worry about that. And it goes dead end here. But that's a wall. Okay, so I'm going to delete that.
then we want to delete the other side to do it for each side, deleting and adding. And I'm going to put a door in there. Obviously this is uh, too big for a door, so I'm going to create another wall off of this. And we're going to add a regular wall. Now I need a cube on the other side to have a door. So let me put an extra cube and I will put my door here on this and I use my arrow keys to select that side. Um, and now I want to add, take the type here and change it to door. I'm going to hit add and at first door it adds is the default door one down here. This is your first door. Um, I can change this to this door here by right clicking on this. Um, and now I and go to the other side and hit add and I've got two doors on that each side. Make sure your transparency is up there. And that's all there is to adding a door. Make sure the door is on auto otherwise you'll fly and click on it it'll be locked. So make sure you always have it selected on auto. Sometimes it goes to locked for some reason but um, make sure that's on it. If you are adding a door to get out of the mine <clears throat> then you will, uh, same thing, you'll go to your arrow keys and select the wall, the open wall, and you'll add an exit. It'll add a, uh, a door, door 13, and I believe the other side gets automatically filled in, yes. The, these doors, uh, if you put standard in, it'll add a standard door, front and back, so let's try that. Insert another wall. Standard door. Both sides. I can go and change my texture by right clicking on the door I want over here. And there we go. Make sure it says auto. Both sides say auto. And that's how you add a door. Um, if you wanted to add a wall of energy fuel cells, just do that, and there's your fuel cells. Easy peasy. It's all, and that puts both sides. These will add both sides. These will add both sides. But if you're just doing, um, I'm just adding a. Uh, one side wall is an illusion and one side could be normal. You could pop through one and, and not be able to come through the other one. Um, that I guess would be a nice way to do those individually. So basically when you're adding uh, any walls or doors just click on uh, the cube you want, cycle through to the open wall area where you would like the wall to be and you can add uh, add them as you want and I would suggest you use either if you're doing using doors just had a, a door here if you're just going to put a wall up add a, use it here and come back and change your wall right click on your wall pattern go to the other side and add it that way so you can only put standard walls in you know oops let me do this pattern you can only put walls in in spaces where they're all, and this is a regular hard up wall, uh, this is a regular or the, a, a, a built wall. So on the other side of this, there's space. On the other side of this, there's another cube. So that uh, that's the reason for adding a wall. If you're just going to add a door or fuel cells or anything that's already pre-made, you can do that here. And that pretty much sums up that. Going to triggers. Uh, triggers in D1 doesn't apply. Um, pretty much I haven't used them. Objects. Let's talk about objects. Objects are the uh, the reactors, the, uh, the players, the weapons, the power-ups, all that stuff. Those are the objects in the mine. Anything that's inside a cube is an object. And we will uh, now click on this cube and I want to add 
uh, by inserting a object we'll insert a player and you can go up to the top and insert one there you can also let me delete them you can also come down here and you can add anything at all this will be player one usually add him and there he is okay so we've got uh, we can add a player there if I want to add a gun I will come in here and I will uh, let's see the quickest way to do this would be just to add another player and then change him to a power-up and make it uh, a laser gun and if you want more than one laser gun there you hit add add if you want to put some quads in there hit another one and then come up here and change it on the ID to quad lasers now you have three regular lasers and a quad laser that's how you add uh, the items if you want to add uh, anything at all just you know take that last item and just add it there it's the quickest way and then just change the ID to something else I want to put in a mega missile there's your mega missile and I want to add something else um, add that and change it to a plasma cannon now we've got a plasma cannon you can see we've get, getting our items in there and then just as you go you <coughs> want to spread things out so that they uh, not all clump together and put your spawn points in places where there are not high traffic areas. Uh, it sucks to spawn and be in the middle of combat and just instantly die. It's no fun for anyone. So try to put your spawn points in places that people aren't usually hanging out at. That's a good spawn point. Usually up in the air if you're if there's any high areas. Usually in a corner somewhere, off off somewhere, not in a corridor. Uh, usually there may be fighting there, but try to find a spot either up and away uh, that you can spawn to. Everybody will appreciate it um, because nobody likes dying right when they spawn in. Um, try to keep your guns separated or spread out too. Uh, typically on a medium map, two to three of a certain weapon is enough. On smaller maps, one to two. On larger maps, of course, however many you want. And of course, anybody can 2x this stuff, so it's not a big deal. Um, let's see, anything else to add do here? No. Okay. Well, if you've got, if you've um, positioning, so if you got an uh, an item here, there's player one, or you know, there's player two, and say he's facing that way, but I want him to face more to the left. Uh, I can go to my position here, and I can change his heading. Uh, and hit apply and he'll go where I tell him to go um, I can change his pitch to be anything but he's looking straight up so that's how you move your guys around you can actually make him so he is uh, you know like back a bit he's turned you know a bit his location can be let's see where are we at apply it's 20 in that cube. This happens to be in the cube parameter. So if you want to move him back a bit, you can do that. You know, he's up against the wall spawning there instead of out in the open. That may, could make a big difference in missile fire. So uh, experiment around the positions that you want to put them. And uh, you can move any of your items, any of your power-ups too. So, I mean, if I had... Uh, this mega missile and I you know I really wanted to get it <coughs> closer to the wall it may be too close whoops that's the wrong way um, let's say you know 40 is that gonna be in the no it's not even in the 30 it's not 30 it's 430 there we go so yeah if I wanted to get my power ups against the wall and not be so out in the open so that there are, you have to reach around to get them. So that's a part of the a map flying too. Now I have to fly in a different pattern to get my weapons. That could affect gameplay. Um, you know, that's another thing you can do. Okay, objects. Effects. I don't use any of this stuff. I think that's all D2 anyway. Lighting. Woohoo. Um, 
let's save this for last and go to any reactors pretty much default leave that alone mission we've talked about that you've got your uh, RDLs and your uh, level names okay, a little glitch there um, anyway let's go to the diagnostics <coughs> section and uh, in here you can check the mine to find if there are any uh, inconsistencies when I hit the check mine button you'll see that uh, <coughs> this entire mine um, there are no errors, no wall errors, no trigger errors. Uh, and under the object section, I've only got three, four, five, six, seven, eight missing. Um, zero, one, and two are there. And zero counts as uh, player number one, by the way. When you look at object zero, that's player one. So uh, when it says we're missing uh, one, two, we're actually missing three, zero, one, and two. All right, zero, oh, two's not in there. Oh, did I miss three there? Right, where's player one? Okay, I understand that. So zero and one, okay, this is actually object two, right? This would be object two, right? I got it. <clears throat> got a little confused. Anyway, um, so here we are, and we have run a diagnostic yet. If you uh, are missing anything, or if you see any, there's any object uh, or lines that are messed up, or angles that shouldn't be. Uh, it'll show up in here and you'll have to click on it and go to it and edit it. And let's see, now texture filters, this I leave default and settings we have done already. Make sure your D1 and D2 pigs are shown in this path. And the pig files are the textures and everything that uh, it needs to create the environment. And then of course your mission file. And that's it. And make sure you hit apply. And we will move on to the top menu. And the top menu pretty much is, you know, got your new open save as that kind of things. Um, edit mission file will take you down to here. Um, edit hog mission hog will will open up the hog manager. And with this particular map, Chugger, there's light settings and uh, there's uh, this is the actual hog file I guess so there's a bug so it makes it use the RDL um, but anyway you would open the RDL whenever you open up a file and hit open um, <coughs> if you're going to edit the mission hog you could come here and rename it uh, import it into another map um, there's certain ways you can make layers of RDL files inside one map and keep that so uh, let's see what else would convert mine to D1 to D2 if you convert it to D2 this will happen convert and all these change this pretty much stays the same but a lot of your layers may look different or may get replaced and you may have to go over here and find a new layer but we will undo that or convert it back. Go, go, go. There you go. Um, and let's see what else we have. Um, run level. I usually just open up uh, the game and run it from there. I've never used this. Preferences. This will be your settings section. So a lot of this up here will revert back down to this tab. Um, information to your past games if you want to get to them quick or levels. Um, cut block, copy block, quick copy and paste. Um, I messed with this for a while and you may want to too. What the premise is, is you can have a, a set of blocks, say for example, uh, this room. <laughs> and you wanted to uh, make that its own map or, or section, so it's a copy block section. You can paste that then into any new map, which is very cool and convenient and time-saving. I just have never done it before. Um, 
but you need to have the dimensions of the pasting block so this would be pasting onto a block that matches this in a mirrored image you know what I mean so any end that you have has to match up with whatever end here and so typically it would be like one I don't know not one but it could be any if you have the same side uh, you know the same plane on another plane you could copy this onto another map and just start adding on that way that could be very efficient so that's what the, those are for copy other segments textures yeah that's that's a, just copy tag untag tag all and untag all you'll see over to the right some of these buttons here when I was saying control M will un deselect uh, will deselect cubes so like right now I want to hit unselect all I would have been control M um, okay edit that's tagging if I want to tag them uh, aside you know M or cube I'm in cube mode or block mode if I were in side mode let me deselect that and I went here tag on tag we just tag that one side that's what M is and you can see that uh, view to editor toolbar editor toolbar is not shown by default so if you want to see that you'll need to click that and you can get to that and that's the same as your keypad um, full screen mode just means it's going to that's kind of like here this button it shows you the whole map it gets rid of all the menu items which is kind of a cool way to check out a map and we added all this crap let's get rid of that um, yeah it's a cool way to check it out view not full screen again the refresh on this is weird um, view textures obviously zoom in zoom out same as your, your number pad items you want to use that fit the view toggle pan rotate da, 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 all this stuff rotate horizontally left you know you can do that with your mouse don't even mess with that stuff um, rotate center on current cube um, it'll do that you know and there is a shift and a home button for that which you can use just for viewing stuff if you want to uh, view all the lines this is what it looks like and when I was saying before about the cursor it can get lost in one of these things it can kinda I guess um, but that's that's useful for when you want to see how things line up you want to uh, see how your cube structure is and we've got um, you know these thin uh, middles inside these two top cubes which allows for um, this type of design where you have uh, you can create a walkway all the way across and I think I did do that in another map this transcended into that um, <clears throat> but anyway you need to decide ahead of time how you want to set your blocks up too so all right let me get back to where I was uh, under view um, texture map just means it brings you back to the texture and um, on this left hand side you have all of the textures but if you just want to see the ones that you have used already in this map then you would just do that and that way if you want to say look I want to select select all of these textures uh, and just you know brighten them or lessen them you know I can do that here and just and, and quickly find them or change something uh, a palette of textures that I want to use and then just use them over here uh, that's kind of something you can do and where were we view um, walls you can see now if we have any oop, any walls here's a wall the walls you'll tell it that they've been made have X's in them see so if I, I don't want to view that X I just you know distracting me do that um, special cubes are going to be fuel centers and yeah things like that I don't have any fuel centers in here so we're not going to see those um, lights and shading Okay, so shading. Um, this has red 
upon it because of these red lights. They're giving that off. But you'll see this is the way the map is going to look when it's uh, being played. Um, if I were to save at that moment. Uh, in the light section here you can uh, do a lot more with that. So this shading just basically shows you the lights with and without the lights. Delta shading have no idea what that is. Um, these will let you view I, I have never messed with this either so I just leave that the way it is. Select next, ob next object you know we'll just select the next one uh, previous object next segment that kind of thing you know I, I never use any of this stuff next side previous side I look at the uh, keyboard shortcuts and see if I need it previous line you know they're kind of after a while you start you know getting next point next line L P you know it's that kind of thing uh, if you want to insert a, a segment so we're going to hit our side mode over here what does it say I want to insert a segment insert a segment you want to hit a normal one boom there it is um, you want to hit a reactor boom that's a reactor cube okay I'll delete that whoop, 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 whoop. delete that uh, inserting doors, inserting triggers, uh, inserting walls. Now all of these we saw down in uh, this section. All of the doors we saw, all of the uh, exits and that. Uh, the triggers we triggers we uh, won't be using. Um, you know the objects we can see obviously down here. So this is pretty much a useless. Um, menu item this delete cube object wall obviously delete on your keyboard will do that and you can do it this way or you just can select on it and delete it that way with the keyboard join separate this is good if you have um, uh, let's see another um, cube out there and you want to make something off of that so you would come to this side join separate sides boom that is no longer connected to that and therefore the shading no longer gets pulled from this side so it develops its own shading but you can now go inside there and reduce that and make it its own uh, cube you can do that again up here and make another one and then make a hallway or however you want to do it purpose wise um, and then if you wanted to connect them again, you would s select one side, hit spacebar, select this side, which is not lit, view shading, turn that off. Um, but you would select this side, you've got that side already spacebarred, this side, and you hit join sides, and it'll create a new cube for you. And fill it in, and that's kind of neat. Um, because then you can take that side and say, well, I want to make this other cube bigger and make this kind of a transition wall to go that way. Um, so you'll see how that is. Technique for that. Joining and separating sides. That's just, This is one you'll use. And, and if you can remember the keyboard shortcuts, you can do that. Tools, texture edit, segment edit, wall edit, these are all the tab things down at the bottom. Except curve generator. Curve generator is where you get the curves and let's talk about that in another segment.